this this is a this is a this is a hell of a good class, hell of a good class. Oops. Um. I'll go. I'll go five. I'll go five to five to five to one again. Here we go. I'm gonna I'm stick. I'll stick Lab McConkey at five. Okay. Georgia. I don't see. I. I. I don't. He's not gonna go. And you know. I. I don't. Does he have Cooper? Cooper Cup potential? Maybe that's a <laughs> stereotyping, but they have a lot of similarities in in their games. Just like the short hands, quick cuts. Um, he does have the ability to break away when he wants to. Some very like sneaky, sneaky uh, breakaway speed there for, from McConkey. I mean, he's, he was a dynamic weapon there for Georgia. I think I think Lyle McConkey gets in the right situation with the right coach. Like a like a Sean McVay or like a Kyle Shanahan type, who like knows how to utilize him, use his skill set. Like he's he's gonna be good. I, I'm a big big Lad McConkey guy. Um, so yeah, I'll stick him at five. Okay, four. Just talked about LSU and Jaden Daniels, and I mentioned how he arguably had two top five wide receivers on his uh, on his squad throwing to, and one of them is. His, is number four guy right here, Brian Thomas Jr. This, this, Brian Thomas Jr. is, uh, to me, probably low ceiling, high floor guy. Just, just kind of a sure guy who's going to come in. I don't know if he has star potential, but he's got size, he can run routes, he can catch, and, uh, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be a good target. I don't see I don't see any way that that a guy like him doesn't have a good NFL career. You know, barring injuries, hopefully he stays healthy. And then coming from LSU too, WRU man, there's been, man. Good, there's WRU. been good history with LSU wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Top three, I think, is pretty unanimous from I think a football fan standpoint. Three though, somebody's got to be three, and I, I think if one of these guys is going to be a consolation prize, consolation prize, I think it's going to be Rowe. Okay. And it's it sucks because I really think in any other draft he could be, yeah. like he could be the the number one. But I, it, and it's really not anything to do with him. I just think the other two guys are just so much better or not so much better. I just think they, they will be yeah. better just in terms of NFL, in terms of measurements, just, you know, prototypes. The Rome is going to, is going to be a, a hell of a, a hell of a pick though for it's almost like the, I mean, what Devonte Smith was the third wide receiver off the board um, in his draft and he was arguably, uh, arguably the best. Could be a similar situation with Rome if he goes to like the Steelers or something, who desperately yeah, like would, need a need a dude. Insane. I don't know if he would fall that that far back though. Maybe I, I would I would I would love that. I'd love that for yeah, your that'd sake. That'd be awesome. We'd have such a young core at that point, if you, especially if you get rid of Russell Wilson, keep Justin Fields. That'd be fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but Odunze just yeah. just because of. Just he's kind of the odd man yeah, out here. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I, I don't know. Again, I don't know if I'm just trying to be different, but I really think Malik Neighbors is a lot closer to Marvin Harrison Jr. than people want to admit. I mean, he's coming from LSU. We we know LSU receivers translate well in the league. Like it's it's more than like a it's a it's a pattern yeah. at this point. Like there is that it, it is it's 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 what WRU. Arguably, <sighs> Marvin Harrison is more like a. They're, they're very they're, they're they're hella comparable. Like they're actually really comparable. I think they have they both have high ceilings, extremely high ceilings, high floors too. I mean, if they they stay healthy. Interesting thing about these two to me is, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. has kind of been penciled in as the number one prospect just for at least like the last season or two, because I think he's more of the prototypical 
traditional perfect prototype NFL wide receiver. You know, size, uh, hands can 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 run can run can you know can create separation. I may look at a guy like Neighbors, who's more of a I think I guess like a modern weapon, more versatile, more kind of you know if he gets in like a, a unique what's the right word like a progressive system with like a, a right quarterback like I, th- I think I think he could have the higher upside I, I really do I really do this guy is this guy is a is an absolute dog absolute dog fights for every extra yard that he can get you know whether it's in traffic a contested catch um, th- thrives thrives off of the off the completion like YAC lives for it. Just the effort, the efforts there. Like he's, he's going to be, he's, he's, he's coachable too. Like he's a coachable player. Um, and then just, uh, like he, he's got, he's got big, big play potential. Every single time he touches the football, short, long, explosive, deep threat, extensive route tree. And NFL is all about versatility, man. And neighbors is the guy who, has had success in the slot. He can beat you anyway, deep, you know, I, like I said, what yak separator man, you know, sitting in the zone. Televersal has had a lot of success in the slot. I had the numbers here. Uh, 10 out of his 14 touchdowns were from the slot. And that reminds me of another guy who had a lot of success in the slot coming out of LSU, Justin Jefferson, who's arguably the best, uh, best receiver in the, in the league right now. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I mean, there's nothing against like Marvin Harrison Jr. is, is freaking like, but I, th- I, th- I think the, it could have been something that like, we got too caught up in like, oh, we've never seen like a prospect like Marvin Harrison Jr. He's like one of a kind, you know, he's, he, he is, he's, he's good. He's a crazy athlete. But I think of guys like Jamar Chase, I think of Julio Jones, AJ Green, who a lot of people have been comparing him to. Um, yeah, I, Calvin Johnson's a little bit before my before my time, but he, I think he was big, big prospect coming out. Was highly touted. I mean, Randy Moss coming from that small school. Um, shit, why is it escaping me? It's a Marshall, was it small school? I think we have seen prospects like him before. So, like, I I don't. I think that could be driving some of like the, you know, just the fact that he was kind of penciled in first, and then neighbors kind of has, you know, worked his way up a little bit. I think they're both going to be great players, but like, I, I don't think neighbors is that far, far off at all. Like I, I really see like a, like an age, like an AJ Brown, like DJ Moore hybrid, like crisp route size, like explosiveness. Okay. Big neighbors fan. Like he's, he, I watch it. He's grown. He's grown a lot okay. on me. He's okay. grown a lot. On I love me. it. 